all the Vesemun from wherever you are. It's uh, your friend, Mwesimbo SKY Banji. It's been a while since we had a, a post, I believe, but uh, yeah. We, of course, looking around, of course, there is so much taking place and going on. And especially here in Uganda, where things seem to be going haywire. It's, uh, it's absurd that um, uh, the people in leadership in Uganda don't seem to get it. Uh, they don't know even how to, first and foremost, deal with what they should deal with in the first place. Uh, given that uh, in a season like we are, we are in now, of course, it's, it's no news that the pandemic has been distorting things the world over. And I'm sure the world and uh, the people of different governments and countries have, have tried to, I mean, to adjust accordingly, you know, in as far as uh, uh, expenditures and so forth are concerned. But for us here in Uganda, we, we're just finding more reasons to spend more, of which half of our budget also depends on donations from uh, foreign agencies and countries, you know. But people are not ashamed that uh, even the, the, the fact that uh, we, we have to borrow or we have to get donations to run our very domestic budget, they're not ashamed to even misuse the same money, actually you know, and distribute it to uh, henchmen and, I mean, whatever they, they can think of, you know. It's like for them they have been put in place, all in leadership, to milk Uganda to, to, to death point. So it's rather sad that uh, the things have been escalating, you know, be, they have been perpetuated by the regime and the, the folks who benefit from taxpayers' money at the regime's mercy, you know, who will not see until the regime that, you know what, we are losing it here. But they'll just sit back, wait for their cut, and, and they're good to go. So it's, it's absurd, really, the events in Uganda. Uh, now they're talking about, uh, I mean, the NSSF uh, money, you know, of course, uh, uh, company, companies and uh, government, uh, civil service and private uh, sector, uh, this is a section of the private sector, is mandatory, it's mandatory to save with NSSF, National Social Security Fund. So, uh, and people have been saving, of course, or aside they pay the other taxes and so forth, you know, pay as you earn and so forth and so on, you know. So Ghanans have been saving for their retirement, you know. And of course, uh, many stories have been going around, you know, as to how, why, how the NSSF fund is being mismanaged or misused by the Minister of Finance, I mean, the presidency, and, and basically this government that we have in place, if I can call it that. So it's absurd that uh, these folks will stop at nothing to, I mean, there is nothing that can seem to, I mean, bring them to a point of, sobering up and say by the way how far should we go or oh, i mean we need to stop the, it's like they have a seared conscience you know nothing no no amount of advice nothing seems to to make sense to them they'll just come do whatever they want make sure make bogus statements and useless statements and then and, and, and because they know that no one can I mean, stop them or advise them, they, they, are, they are good to themselves, they go on, you know, they go on, you know, so it's really the rather upside if you think you, you want to start taxing people's savings, which savings are, are saved in the midst of useless taxes, which are mismanaged themselves, so it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, and then, uh, you know, there's been so much talk about this taxing. You may think that uh, somehow they got uh, an idea that, hey, by the way, tax, taxing uh, creates development, you know. 
it's as if they think that uh, oh, the more you tax your, your people, I mean, the more development you you are bound to it, to to to, to see, I mean, uh, unfold. So it, it's rather absurd. It's it's rather absurd. And we have come to this point. You know, they, they can't, you can't think of uh, reducing a useless government, which is so large. You know, it's larger than even I think the European gov European governments, all European governments. I don't think there's a, a European country which has a government as huge, of course, and useless as we have in place. We have the RCCs, we have the RDCs, we have the advisors, we have the number of ministers over 80 ministers. They're not serving any purpose per se to help our country. We have the parliament that is uselessly huge, 500, 500 I mean, by parliamentarians. So you can't think of uh, reducing the government expenditure by by cutting down on the government, reducing the government. You know, it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it's crazy, it's, it's annoying, it's disgusting. But let's hope that uh, God's hand will somehow stay these, these things and we get over this chapter. Otherwise, it's, it's disgusting, it's, it's sickening, it's disturbing. I'm sorry for the strong words, but, uh, yeah, that, that's that, that's it. That's it. The case in Uganda. We need change as as far back as 35 years ago, I think, because these guys they have nothing for us in, in whatever their plans are. It's themselves and themselves and themselves and themselves and their children and their concubines and their mistresses and their sions. I mean, it's rather absurd. It's rather absurd. But uh. Let's hope that uh, God Sand will say this and we're saved from this kind of barbaric, I mean, uh, way of doing things. Thank you.